if people want to go to a regular yoga class and do that stuff, that's fine. That's great. We are working with people who are vulnerable. We are working with the most vulnerable people in society. Yeah. We are dealing with people who are fragile. The fact that they're even in the room with you is not short of a miracle, right? So they are seeking healing, they're seeking something. So this is why we have to be so careful. This is where why the trauma-informed method, rules, awareness is important, okay? And when, you know, with yoga as well, I'm just gonna skip this video. You know, we need to look at what is yoga. And really, for me, I love yoga. It's part of my life, my healing, my medicine, all of this. And like yourselves, you have this interest. You would have all felt this. And then how do we teach this to other people? If they want to be in Times Square, Park Lane, great, go for it. However, we're talking about people who are vulnerable. Okay. And I just want... To, so this is where we have to talk about safety and why safety is so important. And within yoga, so again, I'm moving this more into the yoga space and everything that that word means, says. Um, yeah, like what is yoga today? It's a multi-billion pound industry. It's all over Instagram. It's all over social media. Um, you know, it, people make a lot of money. We've still, I'm holding the healing, know that I'm holding the healing and how wonderful it is. But there's an, it's quite confusing for, to people, you know, for what, what is actually going on, the, all the different names. You can do dog yoga, beer yoga, goat yoga, all of this, this stuff. So where, where is the healing in there? And I assume that you've all had I have, a set, I have a sense that you would have had some, and actually somebody actually shared where some of what yoga is, regular yoga, might not be suitable for survivors, people who are vulnerable. People are often drawn to yoga because, because they're vulnerable. And this is happening more and more. Uh, yes, and that's great. And I'm bringing into awareness these people, these gen I'm doing this like a bird's nest these people that we have to really look after and be mindful of. And remember, I'm not yoga bashing here. We're not yoga bashing. I love yoga and we are talking about the people, these people, okay? And why I'm so interested in this, is I've been on yoga retreats for, I've been doing this for a long time, like probably a lot of you, 20 odd years. And I've been on yoga retreats and people have had to fly home. I've seen, People literally have breakdowns in re people doing rebirthing exercises. Hey, and if regular people want to go and do that, that's fine, right? But I've seen the fallout. Um, and also with some of my clients, because even though I've done yoga before I'm a therapist, if I played the fiddle and the flute, I'm thinking of Lizzo playing a flute, right? So if I played the flute, and that was good for my mental health. If I'm working with a client, I'm not going to suggest to play the flute, right? However, a lot of, because yoga is so popular, a lot of clients, they're wanting, mostly wanting to get to know it or they already do it. They have an interest in the breathing. Um, but also, I just need to fess up to something here that I've made all of these mistakes. Please don't think, before I was a therapist, I was in training as a therapist thinking, oh my God, I've done all of this wrong. So I'm owning all of that, right? Without any knowledge, all of it. So this is where I, I, it's just when we're talking about the vulnerable people. So I'm just gonna go through a few more things because we've covered most of them. The large class, the loud breathing. I'm triggered by breathing, men or women, honestly, men worse. And I'm there thinking, have these people got absolutely no awareness? And I have told someone to stop it. And when people go into the, you know, the ujjayi breath, if you're in like a hot, with people who have been doing it a long time, the ujjayi breath, and I do it myself, but sometimes it's so triggering for me. My, I go hyper aroused just hearing it, this, the noise. Um, the 
instructor often dresses in revealing clothes. Students might be expected to wear tight clothes. Um, so it's quite sexual. So there's, there's some sexual energy can be in the space. You're touched without being asked, as somebody mentioned. And what I'd like you to do, because I assume that you go to yoga classes, or so, well, a lot of you will. A lot of when I work with some yoga teachers, they'll say, well, I ask at the beginning if anyone wants to be touched. And I'll say, well, how many people put their hands up? Oh, none. Or then sometimes people will say, you lean forward in child's pose in the class. And then they'll say, raise your hand if you don't want to be touched. Try that. See how shaming that is to do that and how alienating. Just try it. Horrendous. So I'm there when I'm going to class, there's nothing. Well, I do it for research for the workshops. I don't want to do it. And that's me. Right. So I want you to try that and see how utterly shaming that is to do that. And recently I did it. No, I did it. I'll give you two examples. One time I did it and the girl wouldn't leave us alone. She'd been teaching for about three weeks, super keen. Right. And I love a new teacher because they're really into it. She couldn't leave me alone. She knew she couldn't touch me, but it was as if she just wanted me to like her more. So I'm like, oh, my God. And then I did it about a couple of months ago and it was in a hot yoga class which is not trauma informed at all. And I, I, I put my hand up and the lad totally forgot and he came over and he was adjusting me. So imagine if you were, if that was gonna trigger you, it was like, oh, okay. So uh, the clothing, the touch is a big one, it's controversial. Um, I've worked with some teachers and they've said, anyone who walks in my yoga studio, I will touch and do what I want with their body. This is now, this is real. Right. And, and the partner work, it's great for community. It's great for this. But partner work for me is hugely triggering. It always has. I walk into that room and I've worked out who's with who. If there's a man there, don't then you would have this would you would have had the experience. You're the man in the room, right? The yoga. But I've worked out is that man? And if I'm next to that man, and it took me 20 years, honestly, to be able to say to a teacher, I'm not doing this. And this was only probably just before lockdown I did it and I said I'm not I'm not doing partner work and then two other women in the class went and stood at the wall with me and let them do it um I don't get this wrong when it's good it's good I get that but we're dealing with people who are vulnerable again genders when there's a penis in the room there's a penis in the room um students are singled out with compliments and criticisms this is in our teaching right we've been taught by um men a lot of the yoga teachings and again this is me of being aware of it let me show you so I remember I love yoga but if you look at the hierarchy how the teaching has come down it's men right Mr Iyengar men there you go there's a naked man um the Toby Joyce most of these people have been taken down with me too quickly forgotten about um so yeah, that men will come and put their hands on. So there's, it's like, oh, they, then they trained all the white women and no one's questioning that we've been taught by men. And somebody else mentioned about the names. So often I do, I used to chuckle, honest, honestly, I used to like have a snigger when they go, sex organs. Today, I'm going to be on a yoga where people are talking about sex organs. And I, but in the past, I would chuckle, buttocks. I think someone mentioned, you know, the joke about buttocks chest they're old-fashioned terms that men would use and women didn't speak up about and didn't say they were okay they're not okay um yet the lot sort of singled out with criticisms think about grooming right so therefore people are being forced to go to the front of the class there's a very commanding tone rather than invitational hey and you're trained in this way as a yoga teacher because you've got to get 30 people to do this or do that, and we've only got an hour, or an hour and 15, or an hour and a half. And there's little understanding of the, more so now, but of the triggering and disassociative potential of yoga props, the blocks, mine are outside, the blocks, the straps. Um, so think about people who've been bound, yeah? When there's been torture, um, even the metaphorical language is removed in the trauma sensitive work. So there's no metaphor, there's no tree, there's no cat, cow, there's none of the jokes that someone mentioned. Um, and there's 
also in regular yoga, there's very long periods of silence and relaxation, which can be great if that's for you, but not for this group, as it already has been discussed with us today. There's a lot of magic. There's a lot of my yoga teacher can walk on water, or I walked on hot coals. How many times have I heard this? And I'll do the eye roll, right? And that's before I was a therapist. I knew it was bullshit, yeah? Um, the magic, the crystals, they've changed the name. Suddenly the middle-class white woman's walking around with a white turban on and she's got a gong in her back room, right? I understand it, I get it, but not people who are vulnerable will get lost in this. There is a real power dynamic. There's a lot of emphasis on external shape and being judged. Again, think about sexual exploitation, being groomed, and that language is old. The groins, the breasts, the open legs. Nobody's speaking up about it. It's not okay. We've been taught we need to question this and I need to encourage you to challenge it. This is a new one, newish, taking photographs on social media without consent. I say it and I'm like, holy crap. You know, there's like, if people were asked, well, maybe they want to please the person, but there is a real power um, dynamic that goes on. When somebody is in this chair that I'm in, when I get on the mat, I'm in a position of power. Also, the spaces are very white. Um, uh, so, and there's issues with gender, LGBTQ, um, for trans spaces. I have quite a few people who are trans come to my classes. Um, so I, I just need you to notice that space. And there's this book now. So I'm not the only voice going on about this. Remember, I love yoga. We want to get as many people of these birds to the healing, right? We know it, but it, there's this stuff. So again, around diversity, I'd recommend this new book. It's called The Yoga Manifesto, and it's a, by a Pakistani lady called Nadia Gilani. It's a new book, and she's challenging um, the appropriateness of the yoga yeah, and the, the gongs, the magic, the Buddhas, the Om signs, the Om tattoos, the Namaste, the Namaste jokes, you know, Nam I'm going to stay at home and all of this. Um, boundaries are an issue. And I've got this wrong in the past with student and teacher. Yes, it's good for mental health. And especially, you know, I know this, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I often get I often get um, yoga teachers being projecting quite a lot of anger towards me as does this lady as well, when she's talking about race. Um, but what happens, so a yoga teacher, you can't walk on water. You know, somebody actually contacted me the other day, it was a therapist, and she said, you're all yoga teachers are healers, and they have to earn their money. And I thought, yeah, and some of them are rapists as well, right? So there's no DBS to be a yoga teacher. Um, but also, if it, to keep, you've got to keep yourself safe. So if, a, and I've worked with someone who this happened to them, where what happens if someone says they're going to commit suicide at the end of a session and it's Friday night and you're going to be with your kids and they've got your number, what are you going to do? You need to be able to refer people on um, because people are vulnerable. So I'm going to just give you an example here. And I don't know if anyone's seen the documentary, the Big Ram. So I, I'm really just wanting to highlight here the how it actually still is now so I was shocked like I say Spain in, in Spain I was just in Spain actually but yoga's quite new in Spain so he's there selling out now totally he's a rapist right so there's something around and also the narcissism that I've seen a lot with yoga teach any, anyone on a position of power whether whatever that podium is the narcissists are there, right? So again, just being aware of that. So I'm going to segue 